The ball turret was the worst position on the B-17. How many times have you heard this claim? It's a common belief among aviation enthusiasts, but World War II casualty data tells a different story. In this video, we'll challenge this long-held myth and reveal the true deadliest positions on the Flying Fortress. The statistics might surprise you, and they'll certainly change how you view the brave men who crewed these legendary aircraft. When it comes to the B-17's crew positions, the waste gunners faced an unexpectedly high level of risk. Contrary to popular belief, these positions suffered the highest casualty rates among all crew members. This revelation challenges our understanding of vulnerability within the Flying Fortress. The waste gunner position initially seemed advantageous. Located on either side of the aircraft's fuselage, these gunners had a wide field of view and the ability to engage enemy fighters approaching from multiple angles. The open space around them appeared to offer greater maneuverability compared to the confined spaces of other positions like the ball turret or tail gun. However, this perceived safety was far from reality. The waste gunners were exposed to a range of dangers that made their position particularly hazardous. One significant factor was the lack of armor protection. While other crew positions had some form of armor plating, waste gunners relied primarily on the aircraft's thin aluminum skin for protection against enemy fire. The positioning of waste gunners also made them vulnerable to flak. Anti-aircraft fire exploding near the B-17 would send shrapnel tearing through the fuselage, posing a severe threat to these exposed crew members. Additionally, the open window position subjected waste gunners to extreme cold at high altitudes, risking frostbite and reducing their effectiveness in combat. Military historians have shed light on enemy tactics that specifically targeted waste gunners. German fighter pilots often approached B-17 formations from the sides, focusing their attacks on these vulnerable positions. This strategy aimed to disable the bomber's defensive capabilities and create weak points in the formation's protective screen. The full scope of crew risks becomes even more apparent when we consider the psychological toll on waste gunners. The constant exposure to danger, the sight of nearby aircraft being shot down, and the knowledge of their vulnerability created immense stress. This mental strain could affect performance and decision-making during critical moments of combat. As we delve deeper into the statistics, the true extent of the waste gunner's peril becomes clear. These brave airmen faced a staggering casualty rate of 19% killed, with 21.1% wounded, the highest among all B-17 crew positions. This figure encompasses both fatalities and injuries, highlighting the extreme danger these men faced on every mission. The revelation of the waste gunner's vulnerability raises questions about other high-risk positions within the B-17. As we continue our exploration, we'll examine how different crew roles fared in terms of casualty rates and overall danger. The next position we'll analyze might surprise you, as it challenges another common misconception about the most perilous role in the Flying Fortress. The nose of AB-17 offered an unparalleled view of the sky and of incoming enemy fire. How did the crew members stationed here manage to fulfill their crucial role while facing such immense danger? The answer lies in a delicate balance of skill courage, and sheer determination. The bombardier, positioned at the very front of the B-17, held one of the most critical roles in the entire aircraft. This crew member was responsible for taking control of the plane during the final approach to the target and releasing the bombs with precision. Despite the importance of their task, bombardiers spent much of the flight with little to do, their moment of action coming only as the aircraft neared its objective. The bombardier's position, however, came with extreme vulnerability. Sitting at the furthest forward point of the B-17, they were highly exposed during missions. This placement made them prime targets for enemy fighters, especially during the critical moments of the bombing run when the aircraft had to maintain a steady course. The introduction of a chin turret in later B-17 variants provided some defensive capability, allowing the bombardier to engage incoming fighters. However, this remote-controlled weapon did little to mitigate the inherent dangers of their position. The psychological toll on bombardiers was immense. Acutely aware of their vulnerability, they faced each mission knowing they were likely to be among the first crew members in the line of fire. This constant stress, 
combined with the weight of responsibility for the mission's success, created a unique psychological burden. Statistical evidence underscores the perilous nature of the bombardier's role. Among B-17 crew positions, bombardiers experienced 16.3% killed and 17.7% wounded. Compared to other bomber aircraft, B-17 bombardiers faced an even greater risk, emphasizing the unique dangers associated with this position on the Flying Fortress. Imagine the perspective of a bombardier during a mission. As the B-17 approaches its target, the bombardier takes control of the aircraft. Focused intently on the bombsite, they guide the plane towards the drop point. Enemy fighters swarm around the formation, flak bursts fill the sky. Yet the bombardier must maintain concentration. In these tense moments, with the success of the mission and the lives of the crew hanging in the balance, the true nature of the bombardier's courage becomes apparent. The combination of critical responsibility and extreme exposure made the bombardier's position statistically the most dangerous on the B-17. Their vulnerability to enemy fire, coupled with the necessity of maintaining a steady course during bombing runs, placed them at the highest risk among the crew. As we consider the risks faced by B-17 crew members, it becomes clear that each position carried its own unique dangers. The bombardier's role, however, stands out for its combination of vulnerability and mission-critical importance. This raises questions about how these risks affected overall mission outcomes and the strategies employed to protect these vital crew members. The ball turret of the B-17 has become synonymous with danger in popular culture. Suspended beneath the aircraft in a transparent sphere, gunners faced a host of unique challenges. Yet, the true story of the ball turret may surprise you. What if everything you thought you knew about this infamous position was based on myth rather than fact? The ball turret, located on the underside of the B-17's fuselov, was indeed a challenging position. Gunners were required to squeeze into a cramped, spherical turret barely large enough to accommodate their bodies. Once inside, they found themselves suspended in a clear bubble, exposed to the elements and enemy fire from below. This precarious position, combined with the confined space, led to the widespread belief that the ball turret was the most dangerous spot on the aircraft. The design of the ball turret contributed significantly to its fearsome reputation. Gunners in this position did not have immediate access to their parachutes, which were stored elsewhere in the aircraft due to space constraints. This fact alone was enough to instill a sense of dread in many crew members. Furthermore, the ball turret's isolation from the rest of the crew added to the psychological burden of operating in this position. The physical demands of the ball turret were equally daunting. Due to the limited space, only the smallest crew members were assigned to this role. These gunners had to contend with extreme cold at high altitudes, as well as the constant threat of enemy fighters attacking from below. The combination of these factors created a perfect storm of perceived danger that has persisted in popular imagination for decades. Accounts from ball turret gunners themselves paint a vivid picture of the challenges they faced. Many described intense feelings of claustrophobia and vulnerability while operating in the turret. The knowledge that they were suspended beneath the aircraft, seemingly at the mercy of both gravity and enemy fire, created a unique psychological strain that few other crew positions experienced. However, when we examine the actual casualty statistics for B-17 crew positions, a surprising truth emerges. Despite its fearsome reputation, the ball turret was not the deadliest position on the aircraft with 6.4% killed and 5.9% wounded. In fact, ball turret gunners experienced lower casualty rates compared to other crew roles, such as the waste gunners and bombardiers we discussed earlier. This revelation challenges our long-held assumptions about the dangers of flying in AB-17. While the ball turret was undoubtedly a psychologically taxing and physically demanding position, the data suggests that other factors played a more significant role in determining a crew member's chances of survival. For a detailed video on myth of ball turret gunner safety, check out our video on the channel which goes deep into this topic. Here are the stats for all crew positions on B-17. The pilot, 7.3% killed and 7.4% wounded. Co-pilot, 5.5% killed and 6.8% wounded. The navigator, 11.8% killed and 12.2% wounded. 
the Bombardier, 16.3% killed and 17.7% wounded, the Flight Engineer, 9.1% killed and 8.3% wounded, the Radio Operator, 7.3% killed and 8.6% wounded, the Waste Gunner, 19% killed, 21.1% wounded, the Ball Turret Gunner, 6.4% killed and 5.9% wounded. The tail gunner, 7.3% killed and 12% wounded. The psychological stress experienced by B-17 crews during World War II was a significant factor in their survival rates. The constant threat of enemy fire and witnessing fellow crews' loss made the psychological burden heavier, potentially determining the fate of entire crews. Crew positions, such as bombardiers and waste gunners, experienced varying levels of stress, with those in more exposed roles reporting higher levels of anxiety and fear. This stress affected mission effectiveness and survival rates, causing reduced reaction times, impaired decision-making, and diminished situational awareness. The military recognized the impact of psychological stress on bomber crews and implemented support systems and counseling. But the relentless nature of the air war continued to exact a heavy psychological price. The collective sacrifice of B-17 crews was immense, encompassing not only physical dangers, but also the profound psychological burden they bore. Our exploration of B-17 crew positions reveals a hierarchy of danger that challenges popular beliefs. Waste gunners faced the highest casualty rates at 19% killed, 21.1% wounded followed closely by bombardiers. The ball turret, despite its fearsome reputation, actually had lower casualty rates of 6.4% killed and 5.9% wounded. These statistics underscore the importance of accurate historical analysis in understanding the true risks faced by B-17 crews. All crew members, regardless of position, displayed remarkable courage in the face of extreme danger. As one B-17 veteran pointedly stated, we were just kids flying in a tin can, and we knew we were going to die, but we did it anyway. This sentiment encapsulates the bravery and sacrifice of these young airmen who repeatedly flew into hostile skies. By examining the facts and dispelling myths, we gain a deeper appreciation for the sacrifices made by B-17 crews. Ongoing restoration projects and memorials dedicated to bomber crews ensure that their contributions to World War II are not forgotten. This accurate historical understanding allows us to honor these veteran sacrifices more fully. Recognizing the true nature of the risks they faced and the courage they displayed in service to their country. Check out our other videos on B-17 Flying Fortress by clicking on these links.